like it should be elastic. It should not be like only one sided. Can anybody tell how it is child psychiatry history taking is different from adult psychiatry? Yeah. One it varies with the age of the child. Okay. Yeah. If the child is very small, then history will be taken from the parents. Yeah, Along. symptoms varies uh, across the lifespan. Is it so? I was talking about when we start off with the history taking. Yeah. So history taking. It, itself, it, uh, uh, hmm. Taking a history it depends on the age of the child. Yeah. Then, then the symptom presentation as well. Yeah. Um, there will be a lot of atypical, atypical presentation for yeah. symptoms. Uh, developmental factors play a role in the presentation of the uh, psychiatric disorders. Then, then, for example, can you tell me? What are the developmental factors which, can you give me one example? Uh, for example, uh, the level of activity of the child will vary according to the age group. Yeah. So we cannot label someone who is a small child as someone who is having ADHD. Yeah. Because as a it age, may be a yeah. normal development, normal development. Yeah. And the presentation also differs. For example, depression in child presents with irritability and somatic complaints. In adult it will be difficult <coughs> if you have a guilt, uh, delusions, those kind of things. And anything else? And it should be, it may be a normal transition. Like other examples are normal transition is if child is getting into the school, preschooler, it may have separation anxiety. From uh, uh, like uh, childhood to adolescent, they will have a positionality. It's a normal thing because of the transition of life. Anything else? Like history taking, it will depends on the age of that factor that we'll, we'll discuss. One is the developmental factors and normal development. Anything else? Environmental factors, family, uh, situations, yeah. parenting. Yeah, we have to take the history in the context of uh, full, like where the child lives, the universe of the child, because it will have influence on the child, like school, or immediate neighborhood, or family, community. Okay? Like what happens in the family, what are the problems at school, with the peers, those things we need to consider. And anything else? It should be in the context of family, school, and peer relationship. Then, and you need multiple informants, and it's time consuming. Because, uh, as we discussed in the earlier session, that is also that. Then anything else? Also observation of child across various settings and interviews. Yeah, Not it leads more of observation yeah. rather than just an interview. Anything else? Input from the school or whatever the child is studying. Yeah, that is multiple informants is needed. And they will have? Yeah. Modality. Yeah, modality will vary. Uh, it is different from the adult. Definitely we will discuss those techniques also. The, and uh, yeah. yeah, about child psychiatry, the uh, multiple diagnosis is uh, a norm rather than a, usually there will be multiple diagnoses rather than just one. Yeah, comorbidities yeah. is a rule in child psychiatry. Yeah. And they have a limited ability to express their feelings uh, compared to the uh, adult because of their uh, maturational and developmental factors. Because uh, in a developmental disorder, if the child having intellectual disability, <coughs> autism, or speech delay, they may not be able to express. Here, the informants are more. We are dependent on parents. The reference comes from the teacher or parents rather than the self. Okay. Okay. Anybody su can summarize how it is different from adult? Okay. One is the symptoms uh, appear. Presentation will be different. And the developmental factors play a role in uh, uh, like uh, presentation also, and we have to differentiate it from the normal uh, thing, and uh, and they have limited verbal ability to express themselves. I need multiple informants and time consuming. Okay, then what are the techniques which are used in child psychiatry to elicit history and uh, interview clinical interview? What are the techniques used? Other child. group can involve, uh, play can be used, then how the play will have a role in child psychiatry, what it does, 
one is building rapport. Oh, then, also trying to express. Yeah, it's a natural media really of expression. Then. Make the child comfortable in the new setting. Yeah, it's comfortability and all this thing. Then the ch child uh, plays out his conflicts, problems, throughout the medium of play. Anything else? Other ways of uh, observation would be, be one of, would be an observation in a. Yeah, it, these observation techniques also, technology. yeah, observation one is observation. It varies, it depends on the age of the child also. If it is an, uh, like pre-schooler, then the observation is very important. Observation between the interaction between child and the mother. If it is a school going age, then we can use a play method. School going and elementary school children. And we can talk directly with the adolescent. The adolescent we may not be able to observe and we not, may not be able to give the play because it is used in earlier ages, engages, not in adolescent ages. These techniques also differ across the age. Okay, then whom do you interview first? Mother, child? Mother, mother. Again, the depends order. on the age. Yeah, the mm -hmm. order also depends on the age. Can you tell me? How adolescents you usually we prefer to see the child first and then the parents. Yeah. Helps in building rapport and establishing yeah. trust between yeah, very the good. Yeah. therapists. Uh, if the children are younger, then uh, child along with the parents. Yeah. Uh, if pair child allows, then we can see the child alone. But yeah. that is with permission of the child and the parents. Yeah. It's better to have one or two sessions before with the pa parents before the child interview. Then later we can see with or without the parents also child. But in adolescent to build a rapport, it's very important to see the adolescent first, interview the adolescent first. Or otherwise we can have a brief uh, introduction of both, uh, interview of both uh, parents and adolescent. Then you can take a permission of the adolescent. Then uh, uh, they can speak with the parents. After permission, you can speak with the parents. Okay. Then, and uh, who are the good informants? Parents or children? It, the order also varies. Yeah. Order of the interview. Right. Who are the better informants? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it varies depending on the condition. Depending on the case and symptoms presentation. For externalizing symptoms, the parents are the better informants because they can see. Uh, hyperactivity, aggression, oppositionality better and we can tend to report more and in a like uh, inner feelings like anxiety, depression, suicidal ideas, sexual abuse, these can be elicited from the child because it is difficult because they may not know parents what is happening inside the child. Like internalizing symptoms, child is a better informant. For externalizing symptoms, the parents are the better informants. Then. Uh, Information collected. Then, what style of questioning is asked? Everyone know about the open-ended, close-ended questions, those kind of things. No leading questions, direct indirect questions. What kind of questions can we ask? Style of questioning. Initially, it can only start with an open-ended where they explain the symptoms, and then if we need to get to a better understanding, we can then direct it. Yeah. First, let them narrate their own story in their own fashion. Then you can ask the specific question which are needed for the diagnosis. Okay, then, that's why in the morning I was telling you have to take a typical day of the child, routine, from morning to evening. How you take in a dementia, like how was the earlier and now what is the problem. Same thing in child also. Then it will give a better picture about the child. Okay, then. And some of the things are there, like some facts chronological details can be ordered by, like you can ask the direct questions. But uh, inner feelings, attitudes you can ask indirect, like uh, relationship issues and all these things. You can't ask directly to the adolescent, do you have any affair with her, <coughs> how it appears. Then they will get offended. That's why you can check indirectly. Have you seen anybody Dear Jindagi? Yes. Movie Dear Jindagi? Uh, yeah. Okay, what will happen when <laughs> Shahrukh Khan asked? The same thing will happen to the child also. That's why we have to ask indirect questions when asking about the sensitive issues, relationship issues in adolescents. Okay, then anything important in techniques? Anyone? 
What are the projective techniques? Yeah, try percent test, man test also. Then, mm -hmm. series test. Then, Reserted on the night and yeah. standard on the night. Yeah, then. Story. Storytelling. Okay, it can be used. But any. Yeah. Test which can be used. TAT is Yeah. But TAT, child versus uh, child uh, perception test. TAT can be used. Then, anybody heard of? Kinetic uh, family drawing. Can you tell me about it? No, I don't know that much. Okay. What uh, it shows family drawing, like draw a person test, draw a tree house person test. What it shows? The, you ask the child to draw his family hmm. and his house. So yeah. we see, uh, uh, the, what we can see is the distance between the uh, the individual people that describes how much close the child is to the, person, the parent. Also, he, sometimes they might draw him separate and the family separate. They may show some conflict. Yeah. We can get to know the child con conflicts and problems through drawing. And we can able to know the cognitive ability also. Like uh, for a three-year child, they will draw three fingers like that. But if they are intellectually low, then they may not be able to draw the things also. Like four-year can differentiate between the body and face. Otherwise, they can draw just one line without differentiating. By this, we can get to know the cognitive ability also and the child uh, conflicts and problems also. And uh, in a kinetic, family kinetic drawing, like uh, we, we can tell the child to draw a family and each person what they are doing. <coughs> and their mother what is doing, father is what is doing. And the, what is the role of the child? Please come. You are 86 to 1 or 3? Yes, no, in between, your number comes between 86 to 1 or 3. Oh, is it the bill number or the one given? To given to the registration number. The mail. The registration number? Uh, 63 now. 63, yeah? Bill is, uh, bill number is 81. It's put studio 3. Okay, studio 3, please. What is your name? Okay. Anybody from the back? One is family kinetic drawing. And uh, dry person test, dry house person tree test, and uh, children a perception test, three wish test. Then, how do you ask three wish test? Can anybody tell? At this moment, you go up in front of you. Yeah. What are the three wishes? Yeah. Anybody? That is also correct. And he comes to give me a God one day and he tells you, you can have anything, whatever you want to, you can wish. Yeah. If you are given that option, what all would you like to wish for? Yeah, it can be anything. It may not be like only toy or that. Anything want changes or any uh, like uh, rewards, anything it might be. <coughs> so those are the techniques used. And then... Uh, can you tell, anybody tell how is, what is the structure of uh, history taking? How do you go about? Like development history, past, personal. Uh, can you, anybody explain how it is different from the adult? Mm. The structure of history taking. Children also we start with the family <coughs> history, birth history, developmental history, mm. going to the temperament and uh, uh, affect regulation, those aspects of it. Yeah. And his school, uh, when he starts to uh, perform in school, that along with that uh, social interaction, peer group interactions, hobbies, talents. Yeah. Uh, then. Yeah. Same thing, but important thing is developmental. In child psychiatry, you have to take thorough history. Everybody knows, but I may not tell you. But uh, one thing is uh, regression history is very much important. If they are not able to give the chronological order of birth history and all develop mil developmental milestone, then you can check. Uh, with the uh, life events or check with how it was with the sibling, compare with the sibling so that they give it better. Then, uh, like uh, school history is very much important. Morning we have discussed what are the issues we have to ask. And then temperament is very much important because many of us uh, find difficulty in assessing temperament. Can anybody tell in brief what are the eight areas under which you will assess temperament? <coughs> Activity. 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 Okay, activity will complete it. How do you ask? Um, whether, uh, as a child, whether he was a very active child who would run around uh, most of the time, so whether he was someone who would sit 
flow model or hyperactive. Or you can give the examples like whether he was cooperative during the whatever dressing, you know, those kind of things also. Then, I mean, in uh, uh, Dr. Savita Manhotra has written on temperament. Uh, they have given uh, nicely all the examples. You can go through those things. Okay, then rhythmic city. Yeah, quality of mood. Can you tell me? Uh, what's the prevalent mood of the child? Yeah. Then, how do you assess? What questions do you ask? Is he happy? Sad? Yeah. yeah. Then, then, if the child likes something or doesn't like something, how the child will be? Okay. Adjustment to the new situations. Yeah. The diversity. Adjustment can be asked in terms of food, the person, place. Then, whether able to adapt quickly or it takes time. Then, activity. Activity is over. Rhythmicity. Whether all the habits like uh, bowel, bladder, sleep, appetite, those are predictable or variable. Okay. Then, approach with all. When observe for a new person, whether he is sociable or withdrawing. Then, threshold level. Like threshold level to anything, fractures like, or any senses. Whether he is very much sensitive or sensitivity is less. Mm -hmm. The threshold. Plus. Persistence. Yeah, persistence, attention, yeah, concentration, distractibility. So that's similar like ADHD. Okay. Same, you can assess it. Persistent, you can ask that if you want to approach any toy, whether he persists in reaching that toy or he will leave the things. Okay. Then today we are giving assessing a case of school residual child and we just briefly discuss what are the aspects you have to co cover when the child with the school refugee comes to you. Can anybody tell what is the important history do you ask? Child with the history of school refusal, not attending school since one month. What are the important histories? The, the age of the child is around seven months. Yeah. What are the Yeah. Age like if it is preschooler or school age or adolescent. If it is preschooler we'll see whether it is normal or it's abnormal. Then <coughs> Age at onset, then? Uh, the, what are the symptoms, first of all, of the refusal? Yeah. Uh, the physical symptoms or the anxiety or the yeah. irritability, tender yeah. attack. They will present with the emotional symptom and somatic symptoms. Um, somatic complaints are more of like anxiety, abdominal pain, you know, nausea, tremors, uh, sweating, those kind of things. And uh, okay. emotional symptoms are temper tantrum, crying, not able, uh, like uh, insisting mother not to, not to send to the school. Those kind of things. Then, what else? What are the main changes that have happened, whether in school or in family or situation? Yeah, if yeah. there has been any sudden transition or change. Yeah. Uh, if it is school, then it is clear to be education related, any scholastic yeah. performance difficulties the child is facing. Yeah. So, uh, if it is no there any conflicts in the family, any sibling, any child is coming to the family, any other transition or death or suppression. Or death and suppression yeah. or any physical violence also. The yeah. child will be fearful to leave the mother. Mm -hmm. Then? Family history of uh, The studies have shown they have <coughs> more of uh, mm. anxiety disorders, like agoraphobia, panic disorders are more in the parents. Then? Yeah, the associate stress at yeah. school or during the in a bus or at home. Then what else? Yes. Conditions like conduct, OTD, ADHD. Yeah. We have to differentiate from the truancy. How it is different <coughs> from truancy? Can anybody tell how it is different from truancy? Truancy is a willful missing of school and uh, they will not let the parents know that they have been missing school. And yeah. Truancy, mm -hmm. And they don't want to be at home. At home. They will be with the antisocial peers. Fear, fear, fear. And they will not comply with the whatever instruction given by the mother. They will not do homework and all these things. And they prefer uh, staying away. And uh, mother may not be knowing. Okay. Same thing. Like here, they will have more of anxiety going to the school rather than refusing. <laughs> then they want to go to school, but because of anxiety or emotional factor, they are unable to. Anything else? <coughs> Other comorbidities you have to check. More of depression, anxiety. What are the differentials of school refusal? Because it's a symptom. It's not a disorder in uh, DSM-5. Like what are the uh, uh, disorders which are associated with school refusals? Separation anxiety, more common than social anxiety. Specific phobias. Yeah. 
have a 20 year old boy who is studying 7th standard uh, in CBSE syllabus. Uh, he's been uh, refusing to go to school since one month. Uh, whenever he goes to school in the morning, he complains of pain in his stomach and uh, he feels like vomiting. And these symptoms uh, increase when he goes into the bus. Actually, the symptoms intensify, the problem intensifies when he gets into the bus. And uh, I get calls from the school that he, uh, that he's not doing okay. And the teacher usually, uh, four, year, four weeks back, teacher called us back uh, and said that he's having difficulty in breathing. And uh, he had to send back from school many times also. But uh, when he's uh, back to the, when he, when he comes back to home, uh, he usually is normal, and in sun, in Saturdays and on, on Saturdays and Sundays, he never complains of such kind of uh, feeling, vomiting, or uh, stomach pain. It's only when it starts early in the morning before he goes to school. So I'm very worried about. Uh, just I'll ask you a couple of questions to get some details about it. So you said he's in the seventh standard now, and in the last one month, he's not going. Home. So. Uh, problems first started? First started with his abdominal pain and... Yes, he started saying that he had pain in his abdominal pain. <coughs> then a uh, few times he started, he vomited whatever breakfast he had also. Okay. How was he before this one month? How was his performance at school? How have things been reported to you? The teacher usually complained that uh, he was uh, he was okay with his studies. He could uh, finish his work or uh, like his homework and all. But usually, he used to finish his work, homeworks in the morning. Okay. And used to go to school. So yes. one month back, you've not had that much of a problem. Mm -hmm. He's been yes. doing okay in uh, in school. Yes. Has it is there any new change in the school environment or anything that he has reported to? No. Oh. I have not observed any change, or he hasn't reported anything. How does he spend, now from the last one month he's not been going to school at all? Yes. How does he spend his day? He usually watches TV, plays with the dog, mm -hmm. uh, goes around to the neighbor. And he's not any, have not had any of these things. No. Okay. Well, can you just tell me a little more about your son? How was he born? Was he born of a normal delivery? Yes, normal, normal delivery. Okay. Uh, he had no uh, problem, like, never had, uh, we never took him to a doctor. Okay. He studied, uh, his school performance is also very good. Okay. And uh, do you have any other children? No, he's not in the he's Okay. And during his growing age, how was he when he was a little boy? Soon after birth, how has, has he been, how has his development in my Yes, yeah, it, it, so it was normal. Did he have any, uh, his sitting, standing, or anything? No, no, no. Okay. Any problems while studying, reading, anything no. that you've noticed? No. Okay. In the past, when, uh, in the school times, have you got any complaints that he does not sit in one place, that he's very fidgety, he's very restless? No. He's uh, very active and uh, he mingles with his <coughs> peers also. He mingles with other <coughs> students also. And <coughs> no, there's never such a kind of problem. At home, have you found difficulties in controlling his behavior? No, he him? listens to me, whatever I say. Change in his other than not going to school, in any other way have you changed change in his behavior? No, actually, uh, this only complaint I have whenever he, uh, whenever in the morning before he goes to school, he just starts with this uh, problem and he doesn't want to go to school. And I'm very much worried because he might, he's been discontinuing since uh, one month. Okay. If you ask him an explanation as to why he's not going to school, he's interested or going or not, what does he say? He doesn't answer anything. He doesn't give any How is the sleep, appetite, eating, and all being now? They are, they are normal. He's not seeing any changes. No, no. Has the same has problems happened in the past at any time, refusing to go to school? No, this is the first time he's refusing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what exactly is the health now you are looking mainly for? One is what is the what is the health that you are looking mainly for the problems? It's uh, why is he just uh, having those uh, like pain in his stomach and uh, feeling uh, nauseous while in the morning? 
and whenever he's at home, uh, why is he normal? So this uh, this uh, only uh, worrying me and brought me here. In your family life, any other changes that happened in the family? She was asking uh, when it has duration and all this thing, able to check the complaints and all. Then, yeah, she has checked with the ADHD, intellectual disability, or any other behavior like uh, emotional or anxiety. Then, developmental. Yeah. School history. Yeah. How the school performance was. Yeah. Any complaints? Good. You have all the answers. Only, uh, how we could have done it differently? Anything else? Um, first thing, medical complaints, we can yeah. see whether there is medical problem. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We have to do all the answers. Mm -hmm. And uh, apart from the school, uh, 50, uh, I think the complaints was that, but then peer group, mm -hmm. how many friends does he have, does he interact with people? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. In developmental, whether social interaction was a problem. problem. Uh, then, uh, in terms of temperament, we could have uh, asked more about how he is. Adaptation to the new situation. You have even asked that there is any change in Changes school or uh, do you have one other thing is change in medium, change in syllabus also will affect the thing. But it's a good that you have asked the change in uh, other things. Uh, any family, uh, family environment. No changes as such have been reported, but what is the family environment? Who are there in the family, the no. joint family? Uh, she mentioned she has a dog. You have a dog. So, you see where you are attached to the dog, whether the death of the dog can be a reason. <coughs> a family functioning in detail. But uh, because of the time constraint, uh, like uh, stress as coping style, those kind of things can be asked. Like, uh, <coughs> it's uh, very common, like mother uh, having depression and father having substance abuse and the violence between both of them. Anything else? Why don't you take about one more time to visit the doctor? The <laughs> 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 past history is important. Yes. Whether she has any consulted anywhere or any treatment has been given. Any past history of depression, anxiety, okay. and we started going to the school. Yeah. And that is also important. Sometimes, I mean, generally, I mean, we will not get some of this information in the first interview.